God bless everyone. Sammy D sitting in my mobile waiting for parking. You know, I've gotten used to this. The more I wait for parking, the more I praise and worship the Lord, the more I read my Bible. So what the enemy thinks or taught or meant for bad, God turns it around. I get closer to God. So if I was him, I think smart and said, let me get this guy parking quick. But I'm here sitting, waiting and uh, meditating, concentrating, participating and just shellacking and uh, relaxing. Enjoying myself in the Lord. You, you know, I'm, I'm dressed like a like a cowboy, so there's a new sheriff in town. You remember those old cowboy movies where the uh, bad guy was always dressed in a black suit and the good guy was dressed in a white suit. And uh, the good guy dressed in the white suit will tell the guy dressed in the black suit, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. Somebody had to go. Usually the guy dressed in the white suit would chase the guy dressed in the black suit <laughs> out of town. Don't ask me why I'm doing it like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm pitching for a part in Hollywood. <laughs> but nevertheless, I believe that when Jesus is the new sheriff in town, when he comes in, the demons and devils and strongholds and principalities and darkness has to leave. <laughs> do you agree with me? I know you do. I was reading from the book of Genesis, bad to the bone in the beginning. The book of Genesis chapter 4. Like we used to say in my old neighborhood, chapter 4, the book of Genesis. And I'm starting at verse 25. Chapter 4, verse 25, Genesis. Listen to this. Adam had relationship with his wife again. In other words, they got busy. And she had another son and called his name Chef. For she said, God has granted me another offspring instead of Abel because Cain killed him. One brother killed another brother. Cain killed Abel. And so God gave him another son, Sheph. To Sheph also was born a son. And he called his name Enoch. At that time, this is where I want to focus on. Forget about how I'm pronouncing the names. You might be, you may be pronouncing it better than me, but here's who, what I want to focus on. At that time, at that time, man began to call on the name of the Lord. At that time, if I had a title for a message, it would be, this is that time. This is that time. Now, of course, we know that Adam had two sons. One killed the other one. God didn't leave it there. He gave him another son. And the name Chef, S-E-T-H, means fix, F I. X, fix. God fixed it. God would always fix it. I imagine this man walking around, everybody calls him and looks at him as, that's Mr. Fix It. He knows God. And because he knows God and he walks with him and he calls on him, they're going to fix it. So whatever you're going through, whatever your face from A to Z and back a few times, God will fix it. Mm, 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 mm. That's a message all to itself. And then this guy named Chef, Mr. Fix It All, had another son. And they call his name Enoch. E-N-O-S-H. His name meant human being. You can look it up. You can Google it. Human being. So God is in the business of fixing human beings. You didn't get that, right? God is in the business of fixing human beings. He called one guy fix and the other called human being. You put them together, God knows how to fix human beings. 
Because we've all been dropped. We've all been dysfunctional. A friend of mine told me that he comes from a broken home. Literally, a tree fell on their house. <laughs> That's a joke. You get it at 3 in the morning. You get up and start running around the house laughing like a wild man or woman. But we all come from broken homes, dysfunctional, all kinds of mass chaos, some more than others. Some has fixed it. Some still dealing with stuff. But here God put two people together, brother, and then his son. He says, Mr. Fix It, human beings. But the main part I want to focus on is at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. When the human being was fixed, he began to call on the name of the Lord. Listen to me. I want you to listen closely. I'm going to take my hat off so you don't think I'm in disguise. Listen to me. We are not totally fixed until we human beings begin to call on the name of the Lord. Woo! Hey! That's a good one. Let me say that again because I know you jumping up and down saying hallelujah. You feel like throwing your shoes up in the end, running around the room. We, human beings, are not totally, completely, fully fixed until we start to call on the name of the Lord. So that time they began to call on the name of the Lord. This time is that time. You say, what does that mean, Sammy D? This is the time that we need to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you want your situation fixed, if you want to come to pieces, not fall to pieces, but come together, the pieces of your life, call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says it clearly. He called one of them fixed, the other one human being. And he did that for a purpose. You see, God puts a name on a purpose for, on a person rather, for a purpose. And the purpose is a divine calling upon your life, a destiny upon your life. So he called one fixed and he called the other one Human being, human beings are fixed. When they began to call on the name of the Lord, they were hungry enough to call on the name of the Lord. They came together and said, we're missing something. Uh, I don't know, for some reason, I don't feel like I'm fixed. Uh, I know I'm a human being and I have everything that God says I have. But in order for me to function properly, in order for me to be fixed, uh, in order for me to have my purpose in life, I need to do one thing. And that's to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, when you start to call on the name of the Lord, then you begin to transform uh, into the image of Jesus. Uh, you have a fellowship, you have a relationship uh, that's based on intimacy with the creator uh, that made you, that fixed you, and he called you to be a human being, my friend. You are fixed uh, when you begin to call on the name of the Lord. That's what the Bible tells me, and that's what I'm about to do. The first thing that happens is, the, you have to build a devotion, a devotional life. Can I put my hat back? You know, mine's a little chilly in here. You don't mind. I, I, thank you. We need to build a devotional life. That means a committed life to God. You know what trust is? Having faith in God. You know what commitment is? When God can trust you. Ah, that went over your head. Sam, that's a good one. Give it to me again. Faith is when you trust God. Commitment is when God can trust you. And the only way that happens is when we have a devotional. I'm devoted to God in everything I do, everything I say, everything I think, my mind, my life, my thoughts, my behavior, my commitment, my money, my car, my home, my material things, everything I commit to the Lord. The second one, if you're fixed and want to be fixed, is not only commit, but have a determination. Have a devotion and a determination. 
Determination means that I messed up, but I'm getting back up. Determination means that I might have slipped and slid, but I'm getting back to God's side. Determination means that that fall back may be a step up for a comeback. I'm not out yet. I'm determined to learn how to read. I'm determined to get my GED. See, I learned how to read when I was 27 years old at Teen Charlie, and then I went for my GED. I failed three times, but I kept going until I finally got it. I'm determined to learn this instrument, a musical instrument, and master it. I'm determined to lose weight. I just lost like 27, 25 pounds in the last uh, several year and a half or so. I just got into a, a lifestyle of change, my eating habits, and got into the gym, and I lost some weight, and I'm feeling good, and I'm looking good. You know I do, and I'm doing better. So determined to accomplish whatever it is. You want that condo in Florida, in Alaska, in the mountains somewhere in Virginia, whatever you want, wherever you want to determine that you're going to accomplish it, determine that you're going to build that family, determine that you're going to build that marriage, huh? determine that you're going to lift up that ministry, determine that you're going to get that job and that promotion, determine you're going to save some money, determine that you're going to accomplish everything God says you could because his power and his presence is in you. Determine you're going to pray more. You're going to read the word. You're going to study more. You've been fixed as a human being. So the first one is devotion. Devote yourself to God. The second one is determination. Don't stop. Don't let nobody stop you. Whatever they say, whatever they think, whatever they throw at you, weave it. Get back in there and determine to finish the rest. The third and final one is destination. You have a destination in God. Hallelujah. I don't know what your teacher told you, what your coach told you. I don't know what the preacher told you, the bishop, the pastor, the minister, the evangelist, the brother sitting next to you, brother cornbread or brother uh, letterhead told you. But I know one thing. God has a destiny to bring you into it so you can accomplish and become everything that God says you can become, my friend. Don't stop short. Don't miss out on your destiny. The Bible says at that time when the fix came into town to fix it uh, and human beings were connected uh, and fixed. Uh, they said at that time mm, 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 man began to call. Help Lord. Hallelujah. On the name of the Lord. That time is this time and this time is that time. Begin to call on the name of the Lord. He'll fix it. Devote yourself. Determine. Walk towards your destiny in the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to wait here another six hours. I'm waiting for parking. But I'm going to get more message. I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to take advantage of this to read more. Praise God. You can't lose with the stuff God used. Hey, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. You got to go. Principalities, powers, darkness, strongholds, pulling them down in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray forever. Listen to this message that you will test them, that you will heal them, that you will fix it. Let them know that they've been human beings that were broken, but now they're fixed. That they have a devotional life, they have a determination, and they have a destiny in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <laughs> Woo! And amen. God bless you. Take care. I love you, man. God is good. Mm, 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 mm.